Hello everyone, I'm Ray LaHood, Secretary of Transportation. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of On The Go. We do have some great questions, so let's get right to it. Perry writes in, with gas prices going up, what is DOT doing to help more people realize the many benefits of biking, walking, and using other means of transportation? Well, Perry, you know that for the last uh, few years, we've really promoted walking and biking paths. We funded a num number of uh, uh, these uh, opportunities in communities where communities have asked us for funding. Uh, we've uh, initiated a very strong livable and sustainable community program uh, that's been very, very helpful to us. Uh, as a part of that, we've also provided significant funding to transit districts. We know that when gasoline prices go up, ridership on buses and light rail and streetcars and other forms of transit also go way up and that people really rely on transit. And so we have funded a number of transit programs. We funded a number of streetcar projects and light rail projects. And um, the other thing that we've done is we work very closely with our friends at EPA on what we call these gasoline standards, which are the standards that are used uh, for car companies to decide how many miles per gallon your car is going to get. And we've been able to work with our friends in the car manufacturing business, both foreign and domestic, uh, in, in setting standards for 2012, which are now 25 miles per gallon. 2016, by 2016, those standards will go to 35 miles per gallon. And most importantly, by 2025, the standards will go to 54 0.5 miles per gallon. So Anna asks, DOT is strongly advocating against texting while driving, but has it ever studied the effects of using GPS while driving? The answer is we're continuing to do research on your question, does GPS distract people? And uh, we've also just implemented some very good guidelines voluntary guidelines for automobile manufacturers so that when you're actually driving your car uh, you can't adjust your system and we're asking car companies to make that part of their safety uh, agenda when they put this kind of technology into cars. They're doing a lot of good safety uh, programs with automobiles but making the GPS uh, so that you can't use it while you're driving is something that's very important. And we're also doing studies to see what the cognitive effects are of people uh, that use Bluetooth or sync. Uh, but we've asked the car companies to do this voluntarily and uh, we hope that they, they will do that. We believe that disabling this technology while you're driving or disabling your ability to really adjust it uh, can lead to safe driving. And so we will continue to do our research on some of these other things but distracted driving will be one of our top safety priorities because we believe that uh, distracted driving has caused deaths and, and injuries. And um, that's really not just me saying it. I would encourage you to go to distraction.gov on our website and look at the heartbreaking stories that are told by brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles about loved ones that were killed or injured as a result of distracted driving. Distraction.gov. Peter writes, when are improvements to commercial waterway traffic coming? Well, they're coming uh, already, uh, Peter. Uh, over the last three and a half years, we have worked very hard uh, with our friends at the port. We have, we've had three port summits. That, that's three more port summits than have ever been held by the Department of Transportation. Uh, we held one in San Diego, one in Chicago, one in Washington, D.C. We have funded more ports under President Obama's administration than any uh, other Department of Transportation. We believe in ports. We believe they provide jobs. We believe they're an economic engine for communities. And in terms of commercial waterways, we have developed what we call our Marine Highway Study, our Marine Highway Report. And we'd be happy to have any of you uh, get a copy of that. If you want to send us an email, uh, we'll be sure that you get a copy. It talks about using the waterways along the ports 
as our highways. So to relieve congestion and to use the waterways, and we believe this report really articulates how, how best to do that. So I encourage you to look at that. David asks, do you expect discretionary grant programs to make up a significant portion of future DOT funding? Well, it's a very timely question, uh, David. Yesterday, uh, or a few days ago, the Senate passed a very good bipartisan uh, transportation bill with 74 votes, 74 senators voted for it, truly bipartisan. Uh, and uh, the overwhelming majority of transportation funding will remain formula-based uh, in that bill and in the future. We're trying to shine a bright light on the House of Representatives now so that they'll either take the Senate bill and pass it or at least uh, pass a bill so that we don't have to extend our program uh, through an extension uh, which uh, the current program runs out at the end of March. So we are going to be working with the House to either pass the Senate bill, which is a very good bill, and it's a good bill because it's bipartisan. It reflects the values of both parties. It reflects the transportation issues that both parties are concerned about. And, uh, but uh, funding will remain pretty much formula-based. We have some discretionary programs, like our TIGER program. Some of our loan programs are uh, programs that we have some discretion over. But the lion's share of our money will really come under formula-based programs. Well, uh, that's it for today. Some great questions. Uh, we thank you for those, and we look forward to another opportunity uh, very soon. Uh, to uh, answer your questions and encourage you to keep writing in on Fastlane, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time.